This is the second part of lecture 13 on dyes and prints. We are going to compare dyes and prints, um, but focus more on prints and pigments in this section. As we started to talk about last time, dyes are complex compounds that adds color to materials by binding with their internal structure. Dyes tend to dissolve in water or other liquids, and so that all parts of the fiber are really surrounded by the dye from the surface of the fiber to to the center of it and so all parts of it are intended to be colored so dyes in that way have to be compatible um, with the fibers that they're dyeing, and so that has to be thought out beforehand we know that at any stage um, things can be dyed but producers or brands prefer to put color on as late as possible as close to trend as possible um, but you have to kind of mitigate that expense because as you get closer to a garment moving from a fiber to a yarn to a textile to a garment um, as it moves through production you have things that get in the way of dye pen penetration and that yarn twist can mess it up um, and not let dyes penetrate within the fiber as well. You can have really compact fabric structures that don't allow dye to absorb evenly or even seams can reduce access um, in, a, in a garment. In this video, we're gonna to start to look at pigments and it, pigments are insoluble color particles that is bound to a textile surface. Pigments tend to be more quick and simple and economical way to apply color to a textile or a garment. But what's nice about pigments is that any color can be used on any fiber, so you don't have to necessarily match fiber chemistry to dye chemistry. But also pigments um, do have additional problems in that when you add them, the, the garment can be more stiff, um, you're more likely to have something crock uh, or fade, or it may have poor abrasion resistance over time. And we'll talk about those problems at the end. Pigments have low color strength. You need more uh, pigment to make something colored than you would with a, with a dye. And pigments sit on top and the, or, or on the front of fabrics. Dyes go all throughout fibers and fabrics, but pigments tend to sit on the surface. Pigments don't need rinsed, and so they're less water intensive than you see with dyes. Most printing um, that you see on your garments is done with pigments. So just a visual of printing. Printing on a garment is done with a pigment that are held onto the surface with something called a binder. So it's a color that's held onto the surface with a, a binder, a very, very thin glue. Color isn't absorbed in any way into the fiber, and it's not as permanent as you would find a dye to be. And the way you can tell if something has been printed is that the, the back is noticeably lighter than the front because the color sits on the surface of the garment or the textile. So I want to go through a couple of types of printing. Printing, um, compared to dyeing, the, the pattern can be very clear and precise. Printing allows an increase in design flexibility. It is inexpensive. You can get really nice, precise pattern fabrics, and almost any fabric can be printed. Block printing that you see here is one of my favorite fabrics to look at. Block printing is one of the oldest forms of printing. It's like using a rubber stamp or if you've ever done potato printing um, of paper. It's the same kind of idea. So a block, a, a wood or metal block is dipped in ink. An ink is a, a pigment in a binder mixed up and then stamped onto a cloth. It can get more complicated. It depends on the number of colors, but you can use multiple blocks or colors, um, but it, you have to be very skilled um, to have patterns lined up. It looks like a slow process. It is a very hand process, but skilled block printers can, very, can move very quickly through a fabric. 
Roller printing was uh, developed in 1783, about all the time about the time that textile operations were becoming more um, mechanized. And so roller printing are engraved rollers that apply color directly to the fabric. And so you can see there's some engraving lines on here where ink would adhere to the higher points in that engraved roller and print it onto a fabric. Each color that uh, is on the fabric requires a separate roller so that the fastest and most economical is typically just two colors. These um, Rollers can last a long time, like you can move really quickly through textiles, of course, but preparing rollers and purchasing the equipment is really expensive, so you have to assume that you're going to get a really long run through them. Roller printing was a, a great early form of quick printing, but a lot of it has been replaced by screen printing, which we'll talk about in a second. Discharge printing is where color has been removed from a, an area of piece dyed fabrics. Um, it's usually done on dark colors where you have something that's been dyed one color and then you want to put a print on it. And so you have a piece dyed or a garment dyed fabric and um, to print it you apply what is essentially a bleach that's printed on it that removes a color and makes it lighter. The, you can also mit, mix in your bleach or apply dyes that aren't affected by bleach afterwards to get um, a range of colors in that discharge area. So silk screen printing was the screen printing I referred to earlier. It's really versatile and simple. Um, you, and some of you may have experienced this before, but you um, make the pattern using a mesh screen with openings only in the design area and then colors move through the screen where you want them to be printed. And so you can see a, a screen printing example here on, on the left, a fabric moving through different screens. So there's a separate screen for each color. Um, you can do as many as 32 in a design. So there, there's two types, this flat bed, and this is typically for smaller lengths. Um, and more large scale designs. So the scale is blown up a little bit. And it can be this process, but it often can be seen as a very a hand process um, on a very long table. So you position a screen over a section of the fabric, you put the color in, and then this, the, the fabric is moved to the next screen. A more quick process is rotary screen, uh, silk screening, like this uh, rotary rolls that you see. It's much more common and it's done with cylinder metal mesh machines that operate very similarly to your screen prints. And they're fast. They will move 100 meters uh, or more a minute. These silk screen processes or screen processes uh, produce really sharp and clear designs. Pattern, um, patterns can be designed by computers and then the computers can apply rollers very quickly, very easily. Here you see a diagram of a roller printing, how each roll might have a different contribution to the pattern that goes through and you can imagine how quick that could be. And here you see a kind of registration for um, um, for the, the flat roll process where you're lining a screen up to print it with the blue and then the yellow highlights and the pink and that kind of thing but you still get uh, a, a very precise type of print and just examples of print cloth you you may have run across so your Vera Bradley type of prints um, are very elaborate type of prints that you might see but there's plenty of printing that happens in the, in the market um, that's considered very fashionable, very fashion forward. Um, you have plenty of printing that's trying to mimic more expensive processes, but also printing that's done, um, that's very valued as fashion products in the, the market. Another type of printing is called heat transfer. This is a pattern that's printed on paper and then moved onto fabric. So 
heat forces a dye into the fabric and pressure makes sure that it's a, a sharp, clear design. It has lower production costs and less chemical waste. Um, and of course, you would imagine because it's heat transfer, this is really good for thermoplastic fibers. So it's used on fibers like polyester very frequently. But the, the problem with heat transfer, even though um, you may have lower environmental impacts in some respects, you still have to deal with the, the paper waste on the other side of it. Digital or inkjet printing use, uses micro drops of colored ink that are applied to fabric very, very precisely. And so computers control the color and the amount of ink that's put out and the location of that ink. Typically right now, inkjet, ink, sorry, inkjet printing is used to produce very small lots, less than probably 500 meters and it's used to make custom prints, samples, and prototypes by designers. So it's not used for mass or scale. It has much more slower production speeds. Think about the, the rate at which even paper printing is done and compare that to how you think about how roller printing might be done. The resolution can be smaller in inkjet ink prints and sometimes you have color matching issues because printers um, run on four colors. Digital printers um, have to have four colors, which are yellow, magenta, cayenne, and black. And so unless you have a printer that has um, more wide ability, you may not see a bigger range of colors. And ink jetting doesn't tend to be as color fast as other methods that we have available to us. Foil printing is um, fun because it gives a metallic look, but it uses very thin sheets of aluminum instead of pigment itself. And so if you're putting metal or aluminum on the surface, you can get it as thin as possible, but it can still feel stiff and can be really easily damaged in the washing machine. And so it doesn't have a lot of abrasion resistance. The best thing to do is hand wash them if you can or turn them inside out and wash them very gently. Common problems we see with printing or dyeing or color problems um, are listed here. Bleeding, crocking, frosting, fading, and registration. Bleeding is a problem of color in contact with water. And so when you have any dye or pigment and it's immersed in water, Bleeding is a problem with the, the dye being released. And we know in wash water, this can be a problem with other fabrics picking up that dye. Crocking is a problem that you see in that middle picture of where um, under abrasive circumstances, color um, abrades off onto other fabrics. And so this would be a real issue with interior fabrics, of course, but this is kind of why you see the warnings on especially denim indigo products um, of that there may be color problems initially, especially if those, those products are wet. Frosting is where due to abrasion, a area of the, the fabric or the garment turns whiter. And so frosting is a whitening of um, products, of garments. And fading is in response to UV, UV light, that makes the, the dye fade over time. We also um, worry about registration problems. And so that you see that in the, the top image there where um, everything hasn't totally lined up. Sometimes that may be intentional, but here you have white spaces where um, the, the designs haven't exactly lined up to as how they're to be printed. And lastly, you can have off-grain positions, especially with printing. The top line you can see if we move across the, the weft of the garment, um, that it is a line that travels with the weft. But the bottom line follows the pattern of the print. So you can see it's a little diagonal. It's not um, totally straight across the page. So a garment manufacturer would totally reject this, this print on this fabric because there's no way to make a garment out of it. 
if you cut it to the pattern, um, which is what the consumer would want to see on the shelf, it um, won't drape right and it won't fit right over time um, and end up not, um, not taking care of consumers' wants and needs. So from this section, you need to understand the difference between pigments and dyes and how they perform differently, how to see them differently on fabrics, the types of printing that we went over, and the common problems that we have to deal with in dyes and prints.